Oh boy, time now for another episode of Mr. Nelson Sunday Comics and continuing on with the Blue Beetle. As his deformed assistant stands by, Dr. Horth applies lethal, paralyzing gas to the recumbent form of Charter, one of the elderly patients of his sanitarium. Okay. He's quite dead. That gas will preserve his features perfectly. Wait, let me give him another dose. All right. I must leave now. You dress that cadaver in his clothes and be ready to produce him when I ask you later. Okay, doctor. Oh, man, he lost his hand. <laughs> At that moment in another part of town, Janet, Charter's niece, visits the police station. Oh, officer, I must have your assistance. Hey, you're Janet Charter, aren't you? What's all this about? My uncle is going to change his will tonight, and I suspect some sort of trickery. I don't trust that Dr. Horth at the sanitarium. Hmm, I think we'll go with you. Later, Mike puts on plain clothes. How do I look, Dan? Just like a Bowery, er, swell, Mike. Whoa, you're breaking every speed regulation. Why not? The police are riding with me, Auntie. Uh, here we are. Hey, Mike, what's that bulge in your pocket? <laughs> and what about the other one in the back? <laughs> what bulge? Oh. That's my revolver. You can't really see it, can you? Oh, no, not at all. Now, listen, you stick around out here in case we need you. Right ho, Mike. <laughs> and I do, yeah. Ah, good evening, friends. Do sit down. We are about to start the proceedings. That's Dr. Horth. That completes the list of relatives. How will Mr. Charter write in? Outside, Dan. I wonder what those two are going to do with that dead body. <laughs> Jeez. As Dr. Horth reaches the rear door with his grisly burden. Murderers! You're going to kill me like you did Charter! That old fool. He'll spoil everything. Perhaps this will shut your foolish mouth. Crack. Oh! So, uh, in a flash, the blow beetle, that's going a little too far. Oof! This dwarf's strength is incredible. He's a dwarf? He wouldn't a second ago. Well, anyway, he didn't look like much of a dwarf there. I mean, boy, the blue beetle's really short, isn't he? I guess. I don't know. I'll have to use all my muscular ability to overpower him. Ow, my leg! Almost evenly matched for strength, the two mighty antagonists battled furiously. Get a load of my crotch. Uh, Charter's body is safely inside now. Dr. Horth viciously crashes a crowbar down on Blue Beetle's forehead. Hey. Bring those two over here. The Blue Beetle is securely chained to the bottom of the shaft. Take that old fool into the lab while I wheel in Charter's body. Okay. We're sorry to have kept you waiting, folks. Mr. Charter won't be unable to sign anything. He, his arm is painting. Harumph! Very well. Mr. Charter may dictate the new will. The dead man dictates his will. I hereby name Dr. Horth as my sole beneficiary. All my negotiable cash is to go to the sanitarium in return for Dr. Horth's kind treatment of me. Uncle Charter's cutting me off without a cent. Say... That's funny. It is? Mike, don't let on that this is all fake. I think my uncle's already dead. Why? 
Yes, his lips don't move as he spoke. Uh-oh. Oh, they noticed that. Quick, get rid of this body. Let's have it. I'll hide it upstairs. So, those were the only ones you suspected. <laughs> Easy enough to put them out of the way. Here they come. I don't want them to see me as yet. But you may be wrong. We have no proof. Just the thing. When they pass this storeroom. Then why did he... Well, then why did he wheel my uncle out so quickly before I had a chance to speak with him? Yeah, that's right. He did get him out of our eye. Listen. Janet, come over here. That was my uncle's voice. Maybe he's being armed in this store. Uh... Hey, look at all them statues in here. Where's my uncle? He has a gun. I, I can't attack him. I didn't anticipate that. I, but suddenly, a statue seems to speak. Beware. Leave before you are killed. Huh? Talking statues, eh? I'll fix them. Come on out of there, you. Now. Uh, blimp. Look at that fool wrecking those plaster statues. You're coming with me, my dear. As the sinister Dr. Horth drags Janet out, a weird figure rises from the wreckage. <laughs> that was jammed down pretty tight. Hello, where'd Janet go? Oh, my God, this is terrible. Uh, oh. I'll find out what's going on here if I have to tear this joint apart with my bath. Uh, yeah, whatever. Meanwhile, gosh, if that card comes down to the basement, I'll be crushed flat under it. It's rising, since I can't possibly break those chains. I'll let the rising elevator card do it. If my body doesn't rip apart first, yeah, that could be a problem. I'll get off at this landing. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, uh What's happening here? They're disappearing. <laughs> Aha! There's my friend, the doctor, dragging Janet into that other elevator. Get in there. Why, they just went in. And now, the car's empty. While Mike... So, the blue beetle. Now I know who's behind all this. Trick me with st uh, talking statues, will you? That was no way to introduce yourself. Hey, let me up. I arrest you in the name of the law. At that instant, Janet's voice. No, that was mine. No, uh, over there. Help, help. Hey, you can't do this to me. I just did. I think I can explain the mystery of the empty elevator now. First, I'll send Mike. Down half a flight? I thought so. There's a second room across the shaft. No wonder they apparently vanished before. <laughs> oh, God. You're not killing her with that gas as you did, Mr. Charter. Want to really try your strength out, do you? Holding the powerful dwarf down with one hand, the blue beetle grabs the solid iron table leg. There, a nice new necktie for you. You'll break my neck. So I guess he did. They, they were going to kill me. You'll be all right now. Drive to the station and send the police up here while I take care of that ventriloquist madman. I expected you to return. Come a step nearer, and I'll blow us all up with these explosive gas cylinders. Mike climbs up out of the top of the elevator, and... Wait a second, you're not going to blow me up with if you... If I can help, whatever. Now I'll pay you back for locking me in that elevator car. 
Look out! As Mike rushes to capture the blue beetle, Dr. Horth silently slips out. <laughs> you dimwit! If this had fa had fallen, it would have wrecked the entire sanitarium. Uh oh Dr. Horth's got hold of Janet out there. You're not getting away. Ooh. Here, catch. As Mike gingerly catches the eye that explodes the cylinder. Oh, what shall I do? It might explode. See if you can puzzle that out for yourself. You mur you know, your murdering days are over, Dr. Horth. The blue beetle leaps down upon the doctor. Yeah. Several minutes later, where is he? Where did he go? That Mike, look, he's got Dr. F Horth for us. Dan saunters up. Oh, hello. Did they finish the will yet? That blue beetle. Arr. We were almost killed. Dr. Horth killed his wealthy patients and intimidated their voices so they seemed to speak, changing their wills to his benefit. Gosh, Mike, it's a good thing the blue beetle was here. Uh, nuts. There are always thrills aplenty in store for you with the blue beetle. Oh. Well, I guess not anymore. I don't know. You want to waste time on this? <laughs> oh, maybe it was just an ad for The Gladiator. And then there's Cuba Kid. Well, I sure like drinking my Cuba. And this girl thinks I'm cool for doing it. There you go. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's it for a Blue Beetle. So I don't know. Maybe we'll do the gorilla or not. Either way, I'll see you next time on Mr. Nelson's Sunday Comics.